In this lesson, we will see how to work with fixed thread pool executors. As discussed in the previous lesson, in fixed thread pool executor, the number of threads is fixed. In order to get an instance of fixed thread pool executor, you need to call new fixed thread pool method on the factory class executors. The number of threads that we need in the thread pool is passed as an argument to this method. On the left hand side, you see a skeleton class called using fixed thread pool, which will be our main class. And on the right hand side is our task class called loop task A, which is just a copy of our fourth task class that we created in the lesson on fourth technique for creating and running threads using Threads API. Now we are going to modify this task class slightly and add a couple of sysouts with eye catchers for easy identification that will signal the start and end of the task. Here I have used a cluster of pound or hash symbols as eye catchers to visually indicate that the task is about to start. Similarly, we can have a sysout for when the task ends and we can use some asterisk symbols to visually indicate that the task has finished executing. In order to emulate real world tasks more closely, let us also randomize the delay by making the tasks sleep for a random periods rather than fixed periods of 250 milliseconds. For this, we are going to use math.random method. It returns a double value between 0 and 1. If we multiply it by 1000, we get values between 0 and 1000. Because the sleep method works with a long value instead of double, we also need to cast this expression to long. So the task will now sleep for a random period between 0 and 1000 milliseconds. And we are done with defining the task. There are no compilation errors. I hope it runs. Let's implement the main class now. First of all, we are going to create a fixed thread pool executor service with three threads in the pool. This line signifies the initialization phase of the executor service. On to the service phase now. So time to submit some tasks to this service. Tasks can be submitted by using the execute method of the executor service interface. And we are going to submit three tasks to this service for the time being. All three tasks are of type loop task A. Running this class now. From the output, we can see that all the three tasks had started simultaneously as we had all the three pool threads available to execute them. A lot of context switching happens and each task gets a chance to run. So all the three tasks run their course and in due time, they all finish their business and end successfully. You can see that even though our tasks have finished, the program still has not finished. It is still showing this red icon here, meaning that the program is still running. So let me kill it forcefully by clicking on this icon. Now, why do you think the program didn't end on its own? Well, as discussed in the previous lesson, we need to carry out the destruction phase of the executor service by calling its shutdown method. There. So running it again now. Similar output and our program has also ended on its own this time. So never forget to shut down the executor service. Otherwise it is going to leave stray orphaned threads running even after you have shut your application down. Moving on. Now, what if we submit more than three tasks? Let us try submitting six tasks. We see that only three of the tasks have started in the beginning and they continue running. Then task number one ends and task number four starts. 
then task number three also ends and task number five starts immediately after that. The last task, which is number six, started after task number two ended. So as soon as one of the tasks ended, another one started. But at all times, the number of concurrently running tasks never exceeded three because we had only three threads in our fixed thread pool. But what if we make the number of threads in the pool as six? So let us try that. Running it again. As you must have guessed already, all the six tasks have now started and are running concurrently. This is because we now had six threads available in the pool at the beginning itself. Now, I want to show you what would happen if we try to submit a task after the service has been shut down. So let us try that too. Running it now. Seems like we've got an exception. We see that we've got a rejected execution exception at line number 21, which is as expected. As the service had already been shut down, it did not accept the new task for execution. One last thing for the newbies before we end this tutorial video. In this lesson, we have just submitted the same task multiple times for exploring the fixed thread pool. However, you can submit any number and any type of tasks that you want and all of them can do entirely different things. The same holds true for all the previous and subsequent lessons in this course as well. This brings us to the end of this lesson. See you in the next lesson now where we will discuss cached thread pool executors.